Another brick fan here with a look at a 20th anniversary Star Wars set. This is Slave One. This is set 75243, was released in April 2019, has 1,007 pieces, six minifigures, and cost about $120 when it was released. This is one of seven sets created for the 20th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars, two of those being gift with purchases. This one is based on set 7144, which was released in 2000. The original had only 165 pieces, so this model is much more detailed than its predecessor. We'll take a look at the minifigures in a few minutes, but let's take a look at the main build first. This is the first version of Slave One that I've purchased, and I really do like the way it was done. It's not as detailed as the UCS version, which was discontinued right before this one came out. So I kind of missed out on that one, which I wish I would have gotten, but this is a really good model. I like the coloring. The use of stickers is appropriate on this model. And overall, it gives you a really good look at Boba Fett's iconic ship. The interior is done with an awful lot of Technic pieces, so it's a very strong model. The guns here, laser cannons in the back, rotate 360 degrees almost. Does run in some of the greebling here on the sides. As I said, the coloring here on the front is really nicely done. And it's done with different colored bricks. So we have the sand green and the gray and then the dark forest green as the color scheme. There's a couple of spring-loaded shooters that are cleverly integrated into the ship right here. Which I like and thought was really well done. They are actually launched using these small pieces here on the underside, which we'll look at in a little more detail in a minute. But she, you see the shaping on the sides is done really well. Again, another little blaster here represented by these robotic arms and then a binocular piece, which I think is pretty cool. These are also on Technic pins. So as you rotate Slave 1 into its flight position, you'll see that those rotate nicely, which is a good thing. The use of stickers is interesting, so there's some good stickers here on these two plates, so you just have to work really hard to line those up just right. It's easy to get wrong. The cockpit inside also has some additional stickers. The pilot seat rotates, so as you move it into different positions, you'll see that the seat rotates and allows for the pilot to be in the right position. Canopy just clips in here, no hinges on that. I really like the use of these large quarter round pieces here to give the detailing along the sides. Looks very good. Lots of greebling. You see a gold ingot piece here in gray, some half round tiles, different use of the sand green tiles here, one of these rounded one by twos, lots of different detailing. You can see some of the Technic workings, like there's a blue pin here, blue Technic pin here. You can see some down here. If you look closely, the back of course opens up which allows you to fit Han Solo and Carbonite inside of the Slave One. The back side of the model is pretty detailed with some trans blue pieces here representing thrusters. Like I mentioned before, these little red pieces here launch the spring-loaded shooters that are in the front. There is a Technic handle that is here, which allows you to hold the ship, swoosh it around, which gives you a lot of playability as well. The model is definitely looks good as a display piece, but is also definitely sturdy enough to be a good play piece as well. And looks good from many angles. 
Let's take a look at the minifigures. This set, <clears throat> this set, this set comes with six minifigures if you count the Han Solo and Carbonite as a minifigure. The minifigures include Boba Fett, Four Loam, or LOM, Zuckus, Han Solo, the Han Solo in Carbonite, and the 20th anniversary edition of Princess Leia. Let's take a closer look at all of these figures. Starting with Boba Fett and Han Solo, you can see that Boba Fett comes with several accessories. He has a blaster that has a extra lightsaber hilt attached to it to give it a little bit more bulk. His helmet has an antenna that connects to the side there. And he's wearing a pauldron over his left shoulder. And as we move around the figure, you'll see his jetpack is also attached. Han Solo is armed with his standard pistol blaster. And he's wearing his white shirt and blue vest that he wore throughout uh, most of the movies. There's a nice printing on his legs there with the, his gun belt. The dark blue color looks really good for his vest, but printing over the top of that with the skin tone and the white shirt, the blue still bleeds through a little bit. So you get kind of a pale blue shirt there instead of the real white shirt that you normally see from the movie. Looking at the printing for Boba Fett, I think the printing is all very good, very detailed. Lots of different colors, and I think it's nice how it goes all the way down from his torso to the waist and all the way down to his feet. So there you can see a little bit of printing for the tips of his boots there. If we move these figures around, you'll see that there is just a little bit of printing on. Han Solo's back done in black on the dark blue, so it's a little difficult to see. And then you see Boba Fett with his jetpack, the Mandalorian style jetpack there, which looks very good. If we move the helmet, see that Boba Fett does not have an alternate face in this case. Boba Fett only has the one face, which is the angry clone, which is to be expected since he is one of the clones from the Clone Wars, as we found out in Episode 2. If I remove the backpack, you'll see that there is some printing again around his back of his uniform and a continuation of, the, of his belt from his waistband. So that's a quick look at Boba Fett and Han Solo. So this is 4LOM, or Loam, who is an insectoid-type droid. 4LOM was a droid bounty hunter that was able to overcome some of his programming and become a very effective bounty hunter in the Star Wars universe. Zuckus, who is the other bounty hunter here on the left, is an insectozoid creature from the planet Gand. According to my research, these two frequently partnered up in the Star Wars universe in order to collect bounties. 4LOM was modified slightly, so he does have an insectoid head. You can see both of these have custom head pieces. Some really nice copper printing there on 4LOM. They each ha they have different blasters, so Zuckus has the has a pistol blaster with a binocular piece on the front to add build it up a little bit and 4LOM has just a regular rifle. The printing on both of these is actually very nice. I like how they use the dark gray and silver then there's some kind of bronze colored printing for the droid and then Zuckus's printing goes all the way down. Zuckus is built using one of the newer skirt or robe pieces. So as we move around, you see the nice molding for both of their custom head pieces. And then you see that there's good printing all the way down on the back of Zuckus's robe. And good printing on the backs of both of these figures. So both really nice figures and uh, 
real good inclusion in this set. Moving on to Princess Leia, this is based on Princess Leia's first appearance, which was in 2000. And you see she has the yellow face. The uh, flesh-colored faces weren't actually released until 2003, 2004. And for Star Wars, actually Lando Calrissian was the first one to get more accurate skin tone. I do like this printed piece that comes with it for a base which includes Princess Leia's name and the 20th anniversary Star Wars logo. And let's look at Princess Leia just a little bit closer. Her hairpiece has the original double bun look that was from A New Hope or Episode 4. The printing on the front is uh, little details around her robe, nothing on the legs. On the back, she has the 20th anniversary Star Wars logo which is actually really big. It covers her entire back, but this is common for all of the exclusive minifigures that come with these 20th anniversary sets. She does not have an alternate face. So simply, so it's just a simple one face with the traditional yellow coloring for minifigures, but still a very nice collector's piece and a good inclusion in the five exclusive many figures for this Star Wars 20th anniversary collection. The final mini figure, if you want to consider it that, that comes with this set is Han Solo Frozen in Carbonite. This is a piece that first came out in 2010 and has been used in about five or six sets since then. I like the use of the dark gray, the dark bluish gray, and then the black highlight, the black printing to add some texture to the piece. There's some white printing on these little raised panels on the side that give you the hint of controls or monitors, readouts. As you can see, there, there are four different prints and they are the same on both sides, although I don't think they're in the exact same order on each side. The mold itself is simply hollow, so obviously not really designed to look good from the back. It's just designed to be displayed from the front but overall a very nice representation of Han Solo and Carbonite, a piece that's been used over the last nine or 10 years. So that's all the minifigures that come with the set. Let's go back and I'll give you my closing thoughts. Overall a great set and a nice update to the original 2000 version. As I mentioned in the intro, this isn't the most detailed version of Slave One since they did do a UCS version that was released in 2015 and then discontinued right before this set came out. One of my favorite parts of the ship are the way they use the different colored bricks to create the modeling of the ship. The use of the sand, green, and gray, along with the dark green elements, really do set this ship off. And it makes it so it looks like a ship that has been through an awful lot, right? With a lot of different panels and different colors and odd places where the sand green is showing through the gray to give it, you know, the well-worn look. And those dark green arch pieces and the way they did the curvature of the ship really does look quite good. All the minifigures are done well and I think they're appropriate for the time period of this ship. So you have Boba Fett obviously as a pilot, which looks really good. I like the pauldron that he's wearing. And that helmet piece is really good. Of course, Han Solo makes sense. The other two bounty hunters, and the iconic Han Solo and Carbonite piece there is also very good. As I pointed out while we were looking at the Many figures, the Princess Leia figure is nice. It does represent the original Princess Leia minifig. Uh, I think the 20 year anniversary on her back is probably a little bit too big and kind of distracts from the, the figure. But other than that, it's overall, it's very nice and it's good to get all of those figures. And I did a look at all of the 20th anniversary figures and I'll link that video up there in the corner. As far as the value of this set, being a licensed theme, I would expect it to be a little bit more expensive. And in this case it is, so there's about a thousand pieces and it costs about $120. So it is above that magical 10 cent per piece. However, you do get the five mini figures, not to mention the Han Solo and Carbonite. And one of those figures is exclusive to this set in the 20th anniversary Leia. So as far as the overall value of this set, I think it's pretty fairly priced at 120, but it's always nice to get Lego on sale. So if you can get this for 
less than $100, it's a great deal. Hope you've enjoyed my thoughts on this Star Wars 20th anniversary set. I'm going to get going on some more videos. Until then, happy building. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel to see more content. I've linked up a couple of my Star Wars playlists up here on the screen.